Carl said the other day that, you, that he's had some discussions with you about his ideal number of touches each week, and yours is different than his. So he, he, he described it as a negotiation process. What's the negotiation on it? I'm glad CP, like I said, he loves the attention. He loves to come out here and, and be a media manipulator. It, it, uh, it's a, it, yeah, and it gets a little dopamine drip, like it probably goes on, searches his name on social media and feels all warm inside. CP's great. He's here to help, help us win. Whatever the game plan is, that'll be how many carries he gets. And uh, we got a lot of guys that want to come out here and compete and win, and that's all that matters. How much does the way last year ended affect the way you plan for him this year? Your off-season plan as well as some the rest of it? Yeah, that's a good question, Josh. Um, obviously, we were a pretty effective all offense when he was really rolling on, on all cylinders. Um, we feel better at certain spots. It's a different, different, completely different offensive group for the most part. Uh, especially from the skill positions. You'll see a different Kyle in year two. Um, certainly, there's things we'll, we'll look to, to push with CP, but the other guys got to step on the CP and, and Kyle. They got to earn it too. I mean, it's not going to be handed to them because of what you did last year. There's an expectation. But if they're not performing, got to find the reward the guys that are. How do we look at the tight end spot? I know it's early, but just like how is he making that up? Yeah, I, I, Felipe is. Uh, it's impressive what he's doing. And it says a lot about him and the kind of teammate. The guy loves to play football. He's obviously got a big arm and, and you know, played at Florida, played at Arkansas. There's been guys that made transitions uh, to other positions. He's a unique athlete, and I love the way he's coming out and competing. He's getting better every day, and all he wants to do is carve out a role and help us win, and I appreciate that about him. How do you handle the running back? better. I mean, we're certainly more comfortable what we're asking him to do, and with that group, uh, there's great competition there. Somebody's going to have to emerge, and somebody needs to carry the ball. But uh, like I said, I mean, that's why you saw Huntley out there today. He deserves it. We'll find the, the guys that are the, the toughest guys that can do it the right way. They'll, they'll go out there and play. What did he, what did he do? He's, he's, well, he's been here and been in this program. I mean, uh, essentially, he had a red shirt year last year on the practice squad, and he's continued to develop professionally on and off the field. And I'm excited to see what he does in the preseason. It would bring him along, you know. Yeah, it, it's, there's a lot of conversations. You know, he's he's as he's rehabbing. We do a lot of stuff with our performance staff, where he's along, where he's at medically, and then we got to assess that really day to day. I mean, the ultimate goal is to get him to 100 percent. And so he can he can help us win. That'd be a weird. No, I don't even say a weird question, but like you have guys like AJ and Casey out there, this jammer. Is, is that just at this point trying to just rotate guys through? Like at some point, you're the best guys. Like we're trying to find any average we can. I know this when I was in Washington. Sean Taylor was a pretty good jammer. He was probably the best player on our team and a really and a pretty good team. And he would go out there and, and and help the team. And so try to put your best players out there. Every 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 down's important, and we got to find an edge wherever we can. I know it's not super common to only carry two quarterbacks, and I know Felipe is going to come in every now and again. But how do you kind of manage their workload? Because I feel like in training camp, they're I mean, they're doing those individual drills. They're throwing a lot. They have a yeah. lot of reps. How do you manage that for them? Yeah. Right now. It, it's all right. I mean, if you talk to the old guys, you know, they, they'll tell you, you know, they had two full practices and pads, and, and God knows how many throws that Dan Marino had at practice or Elway or whoever. But – no, we, we manage that. We, we track how much to throw on. We certainly monitor their workload and, and assess that. I mean, you know, we had an uh, hour, 45 minute practice a day, right? So we had an hour and a half, hour 45, and you got to assess it. Then you change the drills depending on how many throws they've gotten. So let's put a lot of thought into it. Uh, Charles and Rags, they do a good job with that, and uh, we got a good staff. Rules of engagement have changed over the years. Sure. How do you evaluate when you have real competition, which you do in your offensive line? If you want that physicality. How do you, how do you gauge that? Relative. I mean, with the rules, and everybody's playing with the same rules. But um, certainly who's productive assignment-wise, technique-wise. I mean, we're allowed to go full speed. We're not tackling. I get it. There's a little bit different feel if we're not in full pads. Um, but it's all relative, right? They're all playing under the same restrictions. So we try to be as many – Apples to apples comparisons, schemes, things we call in practice, side we you know call the run to to get those evaluations. 
you said you're talking about the running backs, you look for guys who did it the right way. What's the right way from your perspective for a running back? What do you think What's the right way is, Josh? You cover sports a long time. What do you think the right way is? Don't fumble yards after contact. I mean, I don't but nobody. If I'd like to play for you, that's a very <laughs> low bar. But nobody knows. Here's what I, my, my evaluation it might. is. It might. No, they really don't. I've tried. <laughs> no, hey, hey, you got Charles yesterday. You did. I, I a little bet move. You got him a little bet move. You got, got, your, got yourself I went in, back. The, no, no, in no, the weak no. economy. No, the, no, oh, no. Yeah. I went back a second time. That was no. No, 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 I'm, no I'm not blaming you. I, I was afraid. You got him with a bet move, Josh. No, in all seriousness, there, there's a lot of things. You talk about guys that play it the right way. What we're asking schematically. There's a lot of little details that go into the run game, and I'm not going to get all philosophical here, but let's talk about the run tracks, the reads in the run game. Protection, can they make the right reads, and, and are ultimately they're productive. So every, every snap's graded and evaluated to do that. And so those are things that we talk about in there. I'm not, and like I said, I, it's a good question. I'm not going to get into the scheme. Those are little things like that you're looking for. Harvey, you had a I'm guy on the game today that was a, it's a ring of honor uh, recipient and, and Todd McClurin. I saw you had to talk to the team, one of the really good ones, kind of one of the, your kind of guys. Yes. Talk about him. Yeah, so uh, Todd and I had the same college of line coach, and I was just telling Todd the story. I, I feel like I know him really well from, from a guy that coached both of us. He coached him at LSU, coached me. Um, and I was joking with him that when I was in college, that none of us could ever live up to Alan Fanica and Todd McClure. He said, it's funny because when I, before, when I played for him, none of us could be Alan Fanica. I said, well, the good news is a couple years later, he was using you as the, as the, as the standard. And then Mike Malarkey, um, the other guy that coached him, and Mike used to always talk about him. And the guy, and I knew who he was, and, and Matt Ryan would talk about him. And uh, we love having the former guys back, Arch. Uh, it means a lot to me. I want those guys around, and, and it's, it's pretty special. You're right, he's our kind of guy. He got drafted. I, I had him remind the team when he got drafted, seventh round pick. Going in the ring of honor, did it the right way, tougher than hell. Uh, I got all the respect in the world for Tom McClure. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yesterday, Marcus Mariota was talking about. Oh, you how said his name right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen. Happy guys. Mario. Mario. Yeah, I just have to write yeah, it. So it's yeah. supposed to work for this. <laughs> Uh, Rashawn, he was talking about Rashawn Evans and how just how intense he is and how he's a tone setter. How important was that aspect of it when you looked at him and brought him? We're looking for, you said, the, the toughest 48 guys that want to sit here and win. It's not about stats. There's a lot of guys in here. you got a 32-team league. It's about wins. And that's what we're about because uh, other times you get a bunch of selfish players and coaches if you're worried about stats. It may get you some jobs. It may get you some clout on the, on the Internet, but it's ultimately about winning. We want to win. We want to win championships. And that's our objective. So the guys that care about that stuff are not really for us. We want guys that want to come here and compete and win. And if their job is to ask them to carry it three times to help us win, and they're happy, it's good. Uh, you know, it's anybody can be happy if they have 150 yards rushing, you know, and they win. Are they happy when they, if they have 10 yards rushing and we win? Those are the kind of guys we're looking for. So we're finding 48 and Rashawn's like that. But, you know, we'll go, he'll come out here and compete. I know what he's about. I also saw him take a goal line stand up in New England a couple of years ago in the playoffs. Game could have turned the other way, changed the game. So um, we're looking for guys like that. He was hurt last year. I know it didn't end great for him there, but given what you've seen out of him in the past, do you feel like there's still a good bit of upside to get him back to all his upside? You know, until they kick us out of here, like you're not going to do this ever. You're not going to coach forever. Uh, but we're always looking for ways to improve as coaches, as players. That's our job. Uh, so certainly we think there's, there's upside left. We think there's upside left in Casey. You know, he's a vet in here. If there's one little thing he, we can help improve that helps his team, that's how we do our job. That's what he's doing as a player. That's how he stays stays around, around in this league. Coach, I noticed that Ryan Newsel was playing uh, snap in the center. Newsflash? Uh, was that that's his uh, Instagram here. Newsflash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ryan Newsel uh, playing with the centers. Uh, is that a permanent change or just like a cross training thing? No, I think News is um, another guy been in our program like Caleb Huntley. Um, been in here, we're trying to develop him, and I'm excited to watch him play in the preseason, and, and he'll get some shots at center. I think that's a good spot for him. You want to have on the 53 man who can, who can snap the ball if you had to get the ball snapped? I, I mean, those are good strategic questions. You know, when you're talking about roster building, who's up on game day? Uh, certainly, I've thought to us a lot. It helped when they added the eighth guy, right? So you, you can dress up just a center only guy as a backup, where in the past, that would you'd be terrified to do that because if you couldn't go in there and play guard and you only could dress seven. I mean, you could dress more, but most people dress seven. So, 
you'd feel great if you had three. You would. And, and, it, and it helps now that you have eight because you can dress that center only. 